As a little girl, I always loved gazing at the night sky. But at that time, I had no idea that one day I'd actually become an astrophysicist and be studying the universe. One thing that I've learned is that the universe is very different from the way it appears to the naked eye. Our little corner within our galaxy seems so quiet and uneventful, but there are places within the universe that are very different, places like star clusters. And today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about the work that I've been doing to try to understand the truth about what happens to black holes inside star clusters. Star clusters are really impressive systems and they're held together by the gravity of up to millions of stars. And they're very dynamic environments where stars are zooming around and interacting with each other through the force of gravity. In these very dense environments, it turns out that these are one of the few places in the universe where stars actually can interact with each other. And this is what makes them so interesting. Now, stars come in lots of different sizes. The heaviest stars will eventually become what are known as black holes. Black holes form when a star collapses under its own gravity, down to a point. And they're so dense and they have such strong gravity that nothing, not even light, can escape from them. This is why we can't see them. So you might wonder, how do we know that they really exist in the universe? So we're actually able to detect black holes in an indirect way if they happen to be interacting with another star. A black hole can strip away material from a nearby star, which collects into a disk surrounding the black hole. And that material can heat up to extremely high temperatures and finally begin to emit X-ray radiation. And we can actually detect these objects in the universe with existing X-ray telescopes. So since black holes can only be detected if they happen to be interacting with another star, you might think that a great place to look for black holes would be inside dense star clusters where interactions are common. However, as of 2007, which is around the time when I began my journey at Northwestern, it was widely believed that there were no black holes inside star clusters. The theory was that in star clusters, black holes being heavier than most other objects would tend to congregate near the center of star clusters where they would interact frequently and violently. And over time, through these interactions, the black holes were thought to all be kicked out one by one from the star cluster. So old star clusters that we observe today just shouldn't have any black holes remaining. And from an observational standpoint, this story made sense because, indeed, no black holes had ever been found inside star clusters. Until in 2007, when finally the first black hole was detected inside a star cluster. So this new discovery raised some questions. Could it be that there really were black holes hiding inside star clusters? And for some reason, we just weren't finding them. And if this was the case, then what was wrong with our theoretical understanding about how these systems behave? These questions are the focus of my research. So how do we go about finding answers? You're probably all familiar with one of the tools that we can use to learn about the universe, telescopes. And telescopes can provide us with a lot of great information. But there are some limitations to what a telescope can tell us about star clusters. And to illustrate this point, I would like to raise a question. Who ages faster, my son, Billy, or a star cluster? So here are three images of my son, Billy, at a few different stages of his life, as a chunky little baby, as a silly adolescent kid, and now as a dignified five-year-old adult. Billy's changed a lot over his five-year lifetime, mostly in size, but if we were to look at a star cluster over a period of five years, we'd find that nothing really changes. 
star clusters take billions of years to undergo significant evolution. So we could stare at a star cluster for an entire lifetime, and we wouldn't see all that much happen. So what we would like to be able to do is see star clusters more like they really are, as dynamic, interactive, evolving systems. This is what I do as a computational astrophysicist. I simulate the evolution of star clusters in order to help us better understand how they really behave. Doing this requires a combination of brains and brawn. The scientists are the brains. We create the algorithms or the instructions for a computer to follow to simulate a star cluster, for example. And computers, well, they're the brawn. Computers can do calculations very quickly and accurately. And yet, even with the help of computers, this is still a challenging thing to be able to model the evolution of a million stars all interacting with each other over many billions of years of time. But scientists have gotten much smarter, and we've been developing better and better, more powerful algorithms. And computers have also become more powerful over the years. So now, with all this new power, I'm able to try to model these systems in the right way with all the physics that we really need to model them accurately. So now I'm trying to answer the question, what really happens to black holes in star clusters? With my new models, I'm finding that black holes seem to stick around a lot longer than we ever expected. And interestingly, over the last few years, uh, we've detected many more black holes inside of old star clusters. My models suggest that in old star clusters, there might actually be many, perhaps even hundreds of black holes just hanging around. But we don't see them because, at the moment, they happen to not be interacting with any other star. So we don't have all the answers yet, but with computers, we're trying to uncover the new story about how black holes behave in star clusters. And it's really interesting that this new story is turning out to be so dramatically from the old one that we used to know. I'd like to leave you with this quote, and thank you for your time. <laughs>